Hi, my name's Louisa and I'm a harm reduction health educator at Maine General. This video series covers injection technique and today I'll be talking about muscle popping. Muscle popping is the process of injecting a drug into your muscle in order to get high. Instead of feeling a high quickly like with mainlining, muscle popping causes a drug's effects to kick in slowly and they could last longer. Some drugs, like hormones and steroids, are meant to be injected into your muscles. But you could also inject heroin and other drugs in this way. It should really be avoided, if possible, with pills, coke, and speed. People might muscle pop because they're having trouble finding veins, or simply because they prefer the slower onset of drugs. As with any injection, hygiene is extremely important. To learn more about hygiene, Check out our video in the Injection Technique series located within Maine General's Harm Reduction YouTube playlist. Muscle popping substances can actually put you at a greater risk of abscesses than with mainlining. Because of this, it's really, really important to try to inject as close to particle-free shots as you can. Filter before injecting and try to avoid muscle popping with pills. You can use powdered vitamin C to help dissolve shots when you're prepping in a cooker. It's available at most pharmacies. Muscle popping also increases the risk of wound botulism, a condition that causes muscle paralysis and can even lead to death. Scientists still aren't completely sure why this is, but you should avoid sharing works and needles with others to prevent wound botulism associated with muscle popping. Some symptoms appear long after injection, taking days or even weeks to start popping up. So some symptoms are actually pretty similar to the ones you experience with an opioid-related overdose, like blurred vision, slurred speech, troubled breathing, and weakness. Unlike with an overdose, though, symptoms won't respond to Narcan. So if you or a friend can't be roused after repeated use of Narcan while using an opiate, you might be experiencing wound botulism and you should seek me medical attention immediately. If you're muscle popping with a non-opioid drug and you start experiencing the symptoms of an opioid-related overdose, this might also be a sign of botulism. Tetanus is another disease associated with muscle popping with the unique symptom of lockjaw. Two vaccines are recommended to prevent tetanus, the DTaP and the Tdap shot. The DTaP shot is usually given to children, but you can get a booster Tdap shot as an adult. It's usually recommended that you get one every 10 or so years after you turn about 19. If you have a primary care provider and are concerned about tetanus, ask about this at your next visit. If you don't have a primary care provider, Tdap shots are offered at some pharmacies and can be free with some insurances. At Next Step Needle Exchange, we can help you find a primary care provider if you'd like. In terms of site location, your best bets when muscle popping are going to be in your upper arm at your deltoid, which is the muscle where your shoulder and arm meet, the upper outer corners of your butt, and the front to side surface of your upper thigh. If you're injecting hormones, you should only use your butt or thigh. Either way, be sure to rotate injection sites to avoid getting an abscess or any other type of infection. When you're injecting into a deltoid, locate the bone at the top of your arm by your shoulder and place about three to four fingers below it, like this. You should inject where your fingers end, so right about here. If you wanna inject into your thigh, mentally divide your thigh into three sections, moving from your knee to your hip. Inject in the upper outer top of the middle section. If you're injecting into your butt, mentally divide each cheek into four sections and inject into the upper outer section. Long needles are gonna be your best bet for muscle popping because you'll need to go deep, so to speak, in order to reach the muscle. The longest need needles we offer at Next Step Needle Exchange are a bit shorter than the needles used to inject intramuscular vaccines, so you'll definitely wanna insert the full needle. You'll also probably want to go for a wide-tipped needle, which means it'll have a lower gauge. The 28 or 29 gauge needles we provide at Next Step Needle Exchange should work. So when you're prepping to inject, you should try to relax your muscle as much as possible. 
in reality, if you were injecting into your deltoid, you'd probably inject a little higher than I have right here. But for the sake of simplicity today, we'll be injecting a bit lower. So you'll take your already prepped needle and insert it at about a 90 degree angle, like this right here. You'll then pull your syringe plunger back and check for blood. If you see any blood, this means that you've hit a blood vessel and you'll need to remove your needle and start over again with fresh works. But since we didn't hit a blood vessel, as you can see, we're good to inject, which we'll do pretty slowly. We'll then remove the needle at about the same angle we inserted it and set it off to the side. You can massage the area around the injection site for a few minutes after you inject. This will help a little bit with the discomfort and can also help in the drug absorption. At Next Step Needle Exchange, we offer many supplies like cottons, needles, sterile waters, tourniquets, alcohol prep pads, BZK pads, and triple antibiotic ointment. These supplies help create a safer, cleaner environment for drug use, reducing the risk of infections and other problems. Thanks for joining me today, and I invite you to check out more of our videos located in Maine General's Harm Reduction YouTube playlist.